Hi, my name is Jordan Arell, and I would like to speak an open letter to Elizabeth Mead and Wendy Sue Swanson, who are doing a session at the upcoming AAP Experience National Conference and Exhibition in Orlando. Uh, their session is called Troll Control, How to Handle Online Challenges to Your Professional Reputation. So the original uh, version of this description of the session is here. They changed it, I think, because they were getting too much trolling. Um, so I'll read this so you can understand uh, what the session's about, why I'd like to respond to it. So it's, pediatricians who promote children's health online may run into trolls, in quotation marks, persistent and vocal individuals who harass others online over issues such as vaccinations and circumcision. Trolls also may post false negative reviews of physicians and practices. In some cases, harassment has been extreme enough to warrant legal action from pediatricians. This session will look at how pediatricians can respond when they encounter trolls in a way that uh, preserves their professional reputation and practice. Real-life examples will be used to illustrate response strategies. So, first of all, I want to uh, acknowledge you two for the work that you're doing. I appreciate the education of health professionals. Um, I think that's important and uh, that you're trying to, you know, kind of further the um, further the healthcare industry. That's a great thing. We need more healing of people and all of the issues related to that, the doctors uh, experience. My mom's a doctor who has performed probably thousands of circumcisions, so I feel like I can kind of relate to you and see a little bit uh, where you're coming from and uh, your outlook and the challenges that you may be facing. Um, <clears throat> so first I want to say, you know, circumcision and uh, vaccines are very different issues. I don't really know anything about vaccines, not really uh, interested at this point. Um, I do know a lot about circumcision, and so I'd like to speak to that. And um, yeah, I think that... Um, You know, I, I saw something from, I believe it was Wendy Sue Swanson posted about circumcision a year ago um, and why it's not necessary. Um, and I appreciate that. Um, you know, that's really, that's really our, our message is that it's unnecessary and harmful. And uh, so it looks like you already have some understanding of that. Um, and clearly this is about trolls who are, um, you know, people engaging in very hateful speech or um, verging on what seems like violence, you know, posting negative reviews of you and that kind of thing. And I understand that's got to be a challenge. It's got to be uh, really, I know you're, you're trying to do your best. You have a lot of things to think about. You're very busy people. Uh, again, I know my mom and, um, you know, she's really wanted to help people and, and went into a very difficult profession because of it. And there's a lot of social prestige involved, and when that's challenged, um, you know, that challenges your patient, um, your patient-doctor relationship, which is one of the prime things that you have as a doctor. Um, that's, that's a really important, important thing. Um, so, I want to address um, what I believe is sort of the something you may be missing in, in your troll control course. I'm worried that um, the way the very way you framed it, that these people who are uh, upset about circumcision are trolls, uh, seems a little bit problematic to me because I personally don't think of myself as a troll and I care a lot about this and I try to have compassionate uh, conversations with people so that they can better understand it. And uh, especially doctors, you know, I know it's a really big challenge to say you, you've actually been doing something that's really harmful and that that's not, um, not very welcome. That's not something that you want to hear. And I can empathize with that. Um, but I also want to say, you know, you have to look at the, you have to look at the disease, not just the symptoms of this problem, because what's going on isn't just that these people are really angry and upset and trolling you because they hate you and they, they, which is what trolling kind of implies. They're intentionally trying to, um, take you down and 
uh, for no reason really, just for their own amusement, trying to dismantle you in some way, and that's that's not what anyone involved in this issue is doing, I can promise you that. Um, but they are very angry, they are very upset, they're extremely traumatized. Um, I know I was at severe PTSD um, for years around this issue, my psychologist told me to get over it, um, and a lot of a lot of people take that approach. They think you can't really have trauma from circumcision, but I, um, I've experienced it firsthand. Unfortunately, it's it's unspeakably horrible, um, and a lot of men who are upset about this issue have experienced similar things or are in the midst of similar things. Uh, learning that the most sensitive part of the skin on their penis, um, the ridge band, which is the most innervated part of the penis, and the frenulum, which is the next most innervated part of the penis, and the inner foreskin, which is the next most innerv innervated part, and the outer foreskin, which is the fourth most innervated part of the penis. Um, you know, the most sensitive parts of the penis, when tested by pressure thresholds, are all ripped apart and taken away, and uh, there's a much higher rate of complications as well with other problems that men often experience that aren't acknowledged. Um, but even without that, you know, I just have a regular circumcision and seeing the procedure online, how excruciating and painful it is for a lot of babies, um, and really, really knowing that I'm missing out on a sexual experience that I, I really, really, really wish I could have had with all of that sensitivity, with the, uh, not needing lubrication during sex, um, you know, the way, way intact men describe their experience of having their whole body is really beautiful and powerful. Um, and it's, it's clear that there really is a difference when you cut off a huge part of the penis. And a lot of men are increasingly learning about that. Um, it's only growing. And so what I think would be wise of you to do is rather than saying, you know, these people are attacking us, and they hate us, and why are they doing this, and let's, we need to stop them, we need to somehow deal with this. Maybe you could also, you know, I understand that, I understand that, that is difficult, and you're, you're trying to help people, you're not trying to hurt people, um, but you also are hurting people, and you need to look at that. Because your patients are children, your patients are children who, um, who basically can't, you know, when they experience circumcision as a child, they may feel a lot of pain around it. Uh, hopefully if they're old enough, they're given really good anesthesia, or if they're young, they should always be good, given good anesthesia, but often babies aren't. Um, but anyways, the, the immediate pain from it isn't um, necessarily going to be huge for a child. Um, but the pain as an adult, when you find out about that and become extremely upset about it, is... Um, you know, there's men who restore around 250,000, a quarter of a million men who are restoring their foreskins and, and going through this painful process of every day tugging on that skin to get it back, and it can take many years um, for what was done in 15 minutes because they really, really, really are wanting their whole body, and um, that's, the, that's the position I'm in. You know, it's, um, it's really horrible to know that my sex organ was what I consider mutilated, you know, it had a, it had like half the skin on it cut off, that's a lot, and to me, I would have really liked to have kept that, so that's why, that's why these men are so upset, you know, um, they don't think it should be the parent's choice to cut off part of their body, and I think you should maybe take a step back and look at what are you doing to deal with that ethical problem, that um, emotional problem that men experience, that your patient is experiencing. All the ones who are harassing you are, are patients who grew up to be extremely traumatized and in unimaginable pain because of what was done to them by you. Um, and so you have to look at yourselves for a second, I think, and just stop and consider maybe maybe they do have something valid to say, even if they're not saying it in a way that's easily digestible. You know, the anger and the hatred and the trauma, 
um, makes it really, really hard to communicate. That's what causes extremism, essentially. Uh, comes from trauma. Um, if you look at historically where extremists come from, a, a religion or a group goes through a very, very uh, horrendous experience and then they become very, very impassioned, very um, sort of emotionally violent and hard to, it's hard to really be reasoned and explain things. I've done a lot of healing work and I'm still doing a lot of healing work every single day to deal with this. But a lot of men um, just weren't, haven't been lucky enough to encounter that and um, are really doing the best they can to tell you, please, please, please stop mutilating the genitals of children. Um, that's how we experience this. Why can't you see that and recognize that? And finally, I just want to say, you know, I understand this is difficult for you to hear. You don't want to uh, be challenged in this way. It's, it's, not your, it's not your fault, right? It's the American Academy of Pediatrics as a whole and the, um, the medical industry. You know, there's a lot of people you can blame it on. Um, but as you are presenting on this, I'd, I'd like you to take at least a little bit of responsibility and maybe acknowledge those people um, and try that as a strategy. You know, say, hey... We hear you. Um, we're trying to stop this. We're we're doing what we can. We're we're doing something. Just to do something. Do anything. To um, and start by just listening. You know, start by just hearing what we have to say. Um, I make videos on this every day, and I'd be nth degree delighted if an American Academy of Pediatrics representative would um, hear what I have to say and respond to me and listen on any of my videos. Um, and listen to this message, please respond to me um, as someone who has been harmed by this more than I thought anybody could be harmed by anything. Um, you know, please respond to me, please listen, please let's have a conversation, let's have a dialogue. Let's have sessions on having dialogue around ethics, around um, around how we can improve our practices and how we can treat this problem and start to have more conversations among physicians. Um, let's talk about it. Please, please reach out to me. Uh, my name again is Jordan Arell. You can reach me at Jordan Arell, J-O-R-D-A-N-A-R-E-L at hotmail.com. I would love to hear from you and speak with you. Um, and, you know, hear your perspective on this. I'm, I'm trying to do my best to empathize with the little amount of information I have here. Um, I'm, and I'm sure there's a lot more complexity and difficulty to it, but it sounds like you do recognize that there's some, some problem here uh, beyond just trolling and uh, intentional, you know, hatred. <laughs> it's, it's justified hatred. Um, and please listen. Please listen. Um, I think it's important that we have conversations like this as, as us as activists, as, as you as medical professionals. Um, conversations are what transform the world. So please reach out. We'd love to hear your response to this. Thanks.